Eliminate all the things in your life that you hate, you're weak at, and make your time go to things that you just... Actually, let's start again. Here we go. Eliminate. Eliminate all the things in your life that you hate and that you're weak at. That is what I am striving to do in this phase of my life. I'm trying to eliminate things that I hate and eliminate things that I'm weak at. I want my time going only to things that I love or that I am good at. And, uh, you know, I'm doing a pretty good job, I think. It's not perfect. I've got lots more things to eliminate. But what am I talking about exactly? Well, for me, I'm talking about things like doing the washing, doing the dishes, checking my emails, doing my annual tax return, people's Facebook feeds, anything technical like transferring data from one iPhone to another. <laughs> uh, I like to eliminate long commutes. I'm pretty weak at technical stuff. In fact, anyone who knows me well will know that I am a technical... Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to say something politically incorrect. I think it's politically incorrect. I'm not sure, but I'm going to say it. So I don't want anyone accusing me of being politically incorrect or whatever. So I'm going to... Here, here we go. I am technically retarded. There you go. I'm a technical retard. I don't know how to use my computer properly. I don't know how to back things up on my phone. I can't start, I can't navigate a website. Things just seem to always go wrong. And so I'm weak at that and I make sure that I have someone else do that stuff for me. So let's just go through a few of the things that I have eliminated in the, uh, the past year and uh, things that I'm always trying to eliminate. And the purpose of this really is to be more productive and to be happier and to free yourself up to do the things that you truly, that you truly want to do. Um, I realized that certain things that I was, I were doing were really slowing me down. were causing me frustration. were causing me to say F this and bugger this. And Arr! I really identifying the things that piss me off. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, how can I eliminate these things? Or then, or if I can't eliminate, how do I delegate? In other words, how do I get someone else to do it? So I don't have to. So let's start with uh, a pretty common thing, uh, clothes washing, <laughs> doing the laundry. <laughs> now, a bit of context. I absolutely despise taking sheets off a bed and putting sheets back on a bed. Taking sheets off is a little bit better because you just rip things off, pull off the pillow slips, pull off the bottom sheet, throw it in a thing or whatever. That's, that's not too bad. Putting them back on by myself, what a nightmare absolute misery for me you've got to like if you've got a queen size bed you've got the big sheet and you've got to try and strap it over the top left and then the bottom left and then you you put it on the bottom right but then the other one falls that like snaps off and so now you've got to like go and try and like balance the four corners to put it on perfectly oh man i'm exhausted just thinking about it i hate it i absolutely despise it and every time I, I've had to do it, I, I literally, my whole body goes like this. <sighs> oh man, this is just, this is going to be a nightmare. And then I got to get pillow slips and put pillows into the pillow slips. And I, then I got to get the sheet. And then if you own a duvet or a doona, as we call it in Australia, duvet, putting that thing back on like a, like a, a, a duvet is an absolute nightmare because that only gives you like this little short section uh, at the end of the sheet, end of the, the, the you know, the, the clamped sheet to, to thread the, the duvet in. And then you've got to like switch it inside out and make sure that the corners are all fitting. I think, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you're, not, if you're confused, then maybe you don't have a duvet. Maybe you're just, you know, a blanket and sheet kind of person. But <laughs> if you've got a duvet, you kind of understand what I'm trying to, trying to explain here. Um, I despise that. Hate it. So about a year and a half ago, um, I was here in my Los Angeles apartment and uh, there, I live in an apartment building and there is a communal laundry. Um, and to get to this laundry, you've, I've got to go down a flight of stairs, walk to the left, down another flight of stairs. I've got to use a key to open up a grill door to then go into the laundry where it takes quarters, right? 
where you put in, I think it's $2.75 to put in a load of washing. And then if you dry it afterwards, it's like $1.75 or something like that. So you've got to have quarters in order to operate this damn thing. So I remember a year and a half ago, I was doing sales calls. I was at home um, and I, and on that particular t- in that particular time in my life, I was, how much money I made in a day was dependent on how many phone calls I made to prospective buyers of, a, of an information program that I was selling on behalf of my mentor, Ty Lopez. It was called the Accelerator Program. And uh, I could make, you know, if I made eight calls from home during the day uh, and I made, let's say, six out of eight of those people decided to buy, I would get a, a healthy commission and I would get paid. If I made five calls in the day and I only got three people to to purchase, then I'd only make you know commission on three sales, et cetera. So being able to the more money I could make was dependent on the amount of time I had to be able to make sales calls and then obviously be persuasive. So on this particular day, I very foolishly decided to do a load of washing, which I hate. So I stripped the sheets, put them all thing, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I go down. I've made a probably by two sales calls from home on this particular day. And then I go down to the laundry and I, I've got some quarters on me and I put the laundry detergent in and then I start putting the quarters in and I realize I'm two quarters short. So if I've got like $2.25 of quarters, but I don't have $2.75. I need another two, two quarters, right? So I go up to my place and I'm like, F this and ah. And I'm literally searching my home for quarters for two more stupid quarters. So I can damn well operate this stupid laundry machine. Now I looked, I, I, I spent 15 minutes looking under a bed, looking in the sofa and I found one more quarter, but I couldn't find another quarter for the life of me. And the machine only takes quarters. It doesn't take 10, 10 cent pieces or 50 cent pieces. It only takes quarters. And I'm like literally wasting time trying to find a bloody quarter so I can go and put it in the sand machine. Finally, I'm like, I'm pissed off. I grab um, uh, my, my wallet and I only have 20, the smallest note I have in my wallet is a $20 note. So I go down to the store and I'm like pleading with, I go to this gas station, the Chevron, and I'm like, can you change this please? And give me some, give me some quarters. And he's like, oh no, you got to buy something. And I'm like, oh, all right, I'll buy something. So then that pissed me off. So I buy something, I come back, I've got the quarters, I go in and I put the quarter in the machine, I start the, the, I start the, uh, the laundry and I come back up and, and then I make a, a sales call. Now, all of that exercise took 30, let's call it 40 minutes, somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes. And I'm annoyed, I'm frustrated. So I've lost 30 or 40 minutes. That's one more sales call that I could have made. If I, uh, depending on what my commission was that day, um, I could have made... Uh, anywhere from, I think, $300 to $1,000 commission, depending on what level of program that whoever I was talking to on the phone would purchase. So let's just say on average, each call that I, that was successful, I would make, um, let's just be, let's be modest and say $300. So that cost me $300. That's what I figured out. Like the time I was spending trying to do, put, do, do that laundry cost me a sales call, which I may have got over the line, which cost me $300. That's how I figured it out in my head, right? And then afterwards, later on, I make a couple more sales calls and then I forget that my clothes have been sitting there. So now I have to go back down. I've got to pull out the damn tam, um, laundry. I've got to move it over to the dryer. I'm putting the stuff in the dryer. Um, but then I've got too many clothes to put all in the dryer and the sheets like a big queen size sheet and the duvet cover don't fit in the dryer because it's a small dryer, right? It takes up all this space. So I'm bringing this stupid, sh- these sheets out and I'm hanging it over the, the rack or the veranda of my apartment, if you like. So it's facing the sun and I'm, again, I'm annoyed. I'm frustrated. That whole exercise took me 10, 10 minutes. So I make another sales, sales call and then I'm like, oh, they're my clothes. So now I go down under the clothes, I retrieve the clothes, come back up. And then I realize that because I've only hung the sheets over on one side, it's been facing the sun. It's still damp on the other side. So now I've got to switch that over, move it. Anyway, you might be thinking, this is, what's James going on about? This is so simple. I hate it. Like I hate this stuff. I hate it. All of that took another 20 minutes, let's say. So that's one hour, one hour of my time right? Let's call it an hour, an hour, 10, hour, 15 of actual time that I've spent 
trying to do laundry, going back and forth to this stupid laundry, switching sheets, right? Then, of course, even though the sheets are dry, now I've got to go through the, the, the task of now putting the sheets back on the bed, <laughs> which I despise. Despise. So now here I am putting the sheets back on the bed. I hate it. This takes 10, 15 minutes and I'm like cursing the whole time. I hate this. So there's another 15 minutes and now we're up to an hour and a half. So to do laundry on this day, it's cost me and between an hour 15 and an hour and a half. And I'm angry and annoyed and irritated, which means I'm not doing as well as I could do on the sales calls, which means I might even be losing a sale because I'm agitated and I'm pissed off and I'm not relaxed and I'm not calm and I'm not focusing on the person that is considering buying this pr program from me on the phone or not. So I've lost an hour and a half of time and maybe I've lost, let's say 30 minutes of, of effectiveness because I'm in an agitated and irrit irritated mood. So there's two hours that I, and that I would estimate that uh, it's cost me just to do laundry on this particular day. Now, if we, if we go back to what I, I valued my time at when I was doing those sales calls, $300 an hour, commission times two is $600. That was when in, in my head I realized that doing laundry cost me $600. So when I decided to do my laundry, it was costing me $600. I was not making $600 because I was doing laundry. And that was when I decided I just drew a line in the sand and I said, from this day forward, I will never put a load, uh, never um, change my sheets on my bed again. I will never take sheets off a bed and I will never put sheets back on my bed. I will do whatever it takes to never, ever, 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 ever have to change the sheets on my bed ever again. <laughs> because for me, it was like $600 is lost doing that thing. I hate it. It annoys me. So I found a maid. I found uh, a maid and um, someone who could come here and it costs a hundred dollars plus a tip each time that this maid come. And I booked her for uh, initially for once every week, which cost me $400 a month for the maid to come here and strip my bed and do my washing and fold my washing and put it back on. And, uh, bec and so that was $400 a month. Um, but if you, it saved me, immense time it saved me uh my my um, from being frustrated if i'm not frustrated then i'm working well if i'm working well i'm making more money if i'm making more money then i'm happier i'm buying back back my time now that it became a little bit too much for me because i do travel a lot and so when i say it was a hundred dollars a week it's not like i'm here at home the whole time so sometimes i'd be on the road one month it might she might only come twice a month and it was two hundred dollars or one, one month, it might only be once, uh, once a month, $100 plus tip each time because maybe I was over in Europe visiting my brother or traveling or back in Australia or whatever. So it wasn't like it was $5,000 a year that I spent on a cleaner. It was a little bit irregular, right? But you get the idea here. Now, I'd love to say that I've, I've fulfilled that role of never, ever, 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 ever doing washing or changing sheets again. But there have been two occasions that I recall in the last 18 months where circumstances have dictated that I just simply had to do it myself. So uh, my drawing the line in the sand and saying never, ever, ever again didn't actually work, but I can only remember two times in the last 18 months that I've actually myself stripped my bed or put the sheets back on. That's what I mean by eliminating things that I hate, that you hate, right? And so I've eliminated that thing for the most part because I despise it. It irritates me and it costs me money when I do it. So there you go, there's an example. Um, emailing, geez, I get smashed with emails. People emailing me all the time. And I realized it was costing me a lot of time and energy to have to sift through these emails each morning and figure out what was you know, timely that I needed to respond to, what wasn't as important. So I ended up um, getting my assistant. I have an assistant who's based in the Philippines, a virtual assistant, and now I pay her to, uh, while I'm sleeping, excuse me, um, 
she, uh, and before I wake up in the morning, she goes through my inbox and she moves emails into certain uh, mail folders. So if there's emails about 30 day no alcohol challenge, she'll move it in there. If there's emails about my sleep business, it'll, it'll, they'll move in there. If it's something, if it's a receipt for something, she'll put it into a receipts folder. If there's something urgent, then she will leave either a WhatsApp or a, or a Slack message with me um, and say, James has an, e an urgent email that I think you should address. Um, so that way, when I wake up in the morning, all the emails are nicely uh, assigned. I know what is important or what isn't important. And that has saved me a tremendous amount of time. Also, um, taxes, doing tax returns. I used to do nothing to prepare for a tax return until the, fire, until like the end of the year. And usually on either Christmas day, because most of the time I'd be over by myself, either in my New York apartment or LA and not home with family, um, for the most part. Um, recently I've been going back to Australia, but I would spend Christmas day, Christmas morning doing my taxes. Uh, and I'd get it done by like, you know, the afternoon and then go and have a Christmas meal with, with someone. Um, I hated that. Um, despised it. it was always like filled me with dread. I'd have to like gather receipts and like create a spreadsheet and do all this kind of nonsense. So finally I hired an accountant, paid the accountant, paid the accountant $250 a month, $3,000 a year to now do my accounting every single month and I get a, a profit and loss report. And then at the end of the year, the accountants do, do it all up for me and I don't have to. So that saved me and that's $3,000 of money well spent. Uh, and probably I've saved more than that and it's paid for itself because my accountant in doing my um, books is able to find ways and where I can save taxes and, um, um, you know, which would be more than three thousand dollars that I that I pay my accountant. So, I hire an accountant. Yes, two fifty two hundred fifty dollars a month is in, is an expense, but I'm willing to do it. Um, I used to hate, and I still probably hate, looking through people's Facebook pages. <laughs> my news feed, my Facebook news feed, used to be like anyone I was a friend with would show up in my my news feed each day. So whenever I would log on to Facebook, I'd see like the five hundred friends you know, people that I've met years ago, acquaintances, family members, you know, good friends, all their, their, their feeds. And I remember one very distinct night where I was sitting in bed scrolling through this news feed and I actually got depressed looking at it because everyone's always highlighting their, be their best self on, on Facebook, right? They're always saying, oh, my life's great. I'd see these people in uh, popping engagement question, uh, like proposals, like, she said yes. And there'd be a photo of the guy like on his knee with the ring proposing to the girl. And she'd be like, oh my God. And she said yes. And there'd be these smiley photos of them being engaged. And I hated it. <laughs> I love to say that I just love all people all the time. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy for them. No, it made me depressed. It's like see, something about seeing like if, what, what in your mind you think that everyone else is so happy all the time and you're all sort of lying in bed by yourself scrolling through this going, well, why aren't I engaged? Why don't I have that? Why aren't I on a tropical island? Because everyone's like posting photos on their tropical island going, yeah, oh, this is my work office today. And there's a photo of them on their computer in front of the beach or they're by the pool. And, uh, you know, it's all this, this stuff, which, seemingly positive stuff, but everyone's putting their best image forward on Facebook. Anyway, I realized that it was sucking up my time because I was just addicted to scrolling through people's Facebook feeds. And I was also making me depressed because as much as I like to celebrate people's success and people, people are happy. I also don't like to celebrate it because it's got nothing to do with me really. And it also was making me feel like shit about myself, even though I have so much to feel grateful for and I have an amazing life. It's there's something, there was something about looking at other people celebrating their, their lives that made me like, Oh, I don't have that. I was like envious or jealous or irritated. So I changed my Facebook newsfeed settings. And um, so now uh, I didn't unfriend people. Like I kept all my friends, but I changed the settings at the, that to only have um, like six different people's feeds um, uh, come through my feed. So it was my, my fam, my immediate family. I had Tony Robbins. I had Ty Lopez. Um, and uh, I think that's what I started with. And then it's grown a little bit since then, but I really control what comes into my news feed. And, and so what comes into my mind and my brain, um, looking at people getting down on one knee, proposing to people, and saying, she said, yes, and oh my God, we're so happy, and baby photos, and oh my God, baby photos, oh, look, oh, is it adorable? I was like, nah, 
this is not making me happy. <laughs> so I cut all that out. And now I just have like education type stuff for my immediate family, like my mum, my dad, my brothers um, coming through into my, into my um, Facebook feed. So there you go. That was eliminated people's uh, eliminated people coming into my Facebook feed with changing the setting. Um, like I said, I'm technically retarded. I am useless at it. Always have been. Don't want to learn it. Have no interest in learning it. I recently bought an iPhone 7, upgraded from the 6 Plus. Uh, I don't know how to back up a phone. I don't want to learn how to back up a phone. Uh, I had an assistant, in-person assistant, Sarah, who was over here the other day. And I, and uh, um, in fact, I also didn't want to go to the Apple store to, to purchase the phone. I didn't want to look into the plan that I needed to get. I just said, Sarah, I hate my existing phone. It's slow and clunky. Let's upgrade. Get me an upgrade plan where from now on in, um, whenever it, I, Apple or it brings out a new phone, I can just upgrade to the new one. You sort it. Uh, and, and then I want you to transfer the content from my phone to the, to the other one. And for the most part, except for a few things that I had to do, like I did have to go in and delete a few photos from my old phone because I had thousands and thousands of photos stored there. Um, it, that ran pretty smoothly. She got the phone for me. She has access to my credit card. She bought it. She brought it into my apartment. She then charged it, backed up my old phone. And then, um, and then um, for the most part, all I, uh, all I really had to do was um, click, uh, put in my, my, my passcode in order to start a restore or to do the backup or the transfer or whatever. So that saved me probably three hours. Um, doing, I remember when I first moved to New York, someone said, oh, you should go and buy furniture at Ikea. Big mistake. I hate doing it yourself. I don't want to go to Ikea. I will never go to Ikea willingly ever again to go and buy like a table and kitchen chair to bring. Basically, when you go to Ikea, you buy the stuff unassembled, you bring it back to your home and you got to put it together yourself. No, that's never going to happen again. Never, never. Well, I say never, never with the washing, but I still did it. But I'll tell you, I ain't going to be buying anything from Ikea and putting it together anytime soon. No way, because that was a nightmare when I first moved to New York, trying to put things together. I'm stuck there trying to put in a stupid TV stand and and a kitchen table and put a chair together. I'm like, I hate this never, ever again. So I've eliminated that kind of stuff. Um, I also, uh, I also hate the fact that I have so many clothes. Like I've got just clothes, 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 clothes. I read a book called this. I think it's called the simple art of tidying or tidying up or something. I can't remember what it was, but it was basic. And then I also read these guys called the minimalists. They've got these really cool, um, um, blog called I think it's minimalism.com or the minimalists and they really encourage you to just delete like throw out material possessions that you have and just live a very minimalist lifestyle and so I think it was either the book or the minimalist who said whenever you can try to um, do this little exercise where every day for like a week you eliminate 12 things from your home so what I do with my clothes is because of the clothes were overflowing they're all over the place I would just go in there and be ruthless. And if I hadn't worn something in like six months or a year, it had to go. So I would just get shirts and socks. I mean, I had so many socks, it was out of control. Pairs of jeans, shorts, uh, all this crap. And I would put it all together, put it in a big garbage bag. And then uh, I wouldn't throw it out. I would, I would uh, give it to the, to the homeless or I'd, I'd have Sarah, my assistant, go and take it to like a shelter or one of those places where you can donate, donate clothes. But that really... Um, has cleaned my closet out, which is terrific. And, and it's still somehow it still finds uh, stuff, still f new stuff finds its way in there. And by the way, most of the time it's not me buying it. It's just people either giving me gifts or I, sometimes I go to the Sundance film festival in Utah where they give you free stuff because they're trying to get, you know, their products into people's hands. And, and so a lot of the stuff I have is free, but it, it is much. So anyway, the, the point is, is that, um, looking in my in my closet was just was causing me stress and so i went bang i'm going to run this exercise where every day i'm going to eliminate 12 things and i did and sometimes it was tough but uh ultimately now my closet is a lot cleaner and and a lot smaller and that uh makes me uh, less have less stress uh commuting long commutes like um they've done these studies that show that if you have a commute anything longer than 15 minutes then your your cortisol levels increase Cortisol is the stress hormone. And if you have high cortisol, then that can lead to um, storing fat, stress, um, 
uh, irritability, et cetera, et cetera. So when I, when I, um, one of the reasons why I chose the apartment that I do live in in Los Angeles and West Hollywood is that um, I kind of had this idea in my head. I want the one mile rule, which means I want most of the things that I have to do within one mile of where I live. And that's where I will spend most of my Monday through Friday. And then on weekends, I'll travel or I'll go out of that one mile. So I, I live between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevards on a street called Laurel, just up the road from the Laugh Factory. It takes me five minutes to walk to the Crunch Gym uh, on Sunset Boulevard where I work out. There's also a Trader Joe's supermarket underneath that uh, gym. So I'll go shopping there on occasion. Um, uh, there's a hair, uh, a barber down there. I can, uh, with, uh, I can go and get my, my hair cut. There is a, um, there's restaurants, so I don't have to get in a car and drive to restaurants. I can walk down to the counter burger or I can walk to, uh, I think it's Evo Kitchen or um, uh, there's a Jewish deli as well uh, there on Sunset. Um, the Laugh Factory is a walk down the road. Sometimes I'll do a comedy on a Monday night and I'll walk in there. Like I, I've set it up so everything's really within a mile. Um, that way I don't have to drive. That way I don't have long commutes. That way I don't get stuck in LA traffic. Um, so I've eliminated, I eliminated the commute by choosing my location. I also realized I, re I actually quite dislike driving in general. Um, and I didn't realize that until I've gone, until I went two and a half years with only getting Ubers and, and not owning a car. And then when I do get a car, I actually find it quite not stressful, but not calming. Um, trying to find a park. Um, having to like, you know, when you finally do park your car, the, the act and the motion of pulling, reaching into your pockets to pull out your card, to lean through the window, to try and put your credit card in, to pay for the ticket, to try to find, um, find the ticket and maybe you lose it. Now you got to talk to the parking attendant say, I lost my ticket. And they say, well, it's a $20 minimum. And I say, oh, I was only there for 40 minutes. He said, well, you lost your ticket. You know, all of that kind of crap uh, I dislike. And um and uh, so I like the fact that I don't have a car. I like the fact that I, that I Uber and I have a driver who drops me off and takes me things. So I eliminated long, uh, long commutes and I eliminated driving. I eliminated driving. Get a driver. Got a driver. That's cool. Booking travel. Uh, really hated having to search on Southwest Airlines, American Airlines, whatever, flights.com, Expedia, whatever, trying to find the best flight. Um, so now I have my assistant in the Philippines. I just send her a WhatsApp and I say, I want to go to Austin on this date. I want to come back on this date, look into flights for me. She will spend time looking uh, into that. She enjoys doing it. She'll call the airlines or she'll look online. She'll present me with a couple of options and then I'll just quickly go bang and pick one. She then has access to my credit card. She'll pay for it. Um, lines at airports. I hated lines at airports. Like you go to the airport and you're stuck in that security line. You got to take your shoes off. You got to wait. You got to pull your computer out of your, out of your bag. You got to go through the thing where they search you. You got to then put your shoes back on. If you've taken your belt off, you got to put your belt back on. Like it's just a, it's a tiring process. So what I did was I figured out that I could get, if I um, took one hour going to the, I think it's the TSA office, and you can get pre, uh, pre-checked. It's, I think it's called pre -check. Let me just Google it here while I'm recording this. TSA pre-check. So you can go there, show them that you're not a uh, terrorist or a, um, um, that you've been in prison or charged or anything like that, that you're an upstanding citizen. It's called TSA pre, TSA um, pre. So now I went there to a place in Hollywood you go there, you take your ID. I think they take your photo and everything. And then like two or two months later, they go, yep, you're in. And so now when I go to on a domestic flight in the U S I'm TSA pre-qualified, which means I get to skip the long line of people go to the TSA line, which, um, and then guess what? I don't have to take my shoes off and I don't have to remove my, um, laptop and I don't have to remove liquids and put them in a um, you know clear plastic bag. So and now I just go whoosh, straight through. It's awesome. Saves me time. Saves me stress. Uh, happy days. Uh, I realize as I'm saying this, I'm probably sounding like a whiner, right? Like, oh, James, well, it's such a tough life. You hate all those things. Well, yeah, I do sound like a bit of a whiner. But at the same time, eliminate all the things that you hate. Eliminate the things that you're weak at. Make your time go only to things that you love and you're good at. I actually have that written down on my, um, in my phone, in my notes. It literally says, eliminate all the things, dot, dot, you hate, you're weak at, 
uh, and then make your time go only to things you love and are good at. So I try to remind myself of that all the time. I'm having a, um, a mastermind at my home tomorrow night. I'm, I've got 16 people coming. Um, we're going to talk about entrep excuse me, entrepreneurship. Um, I don't want to organize the food. I don't want to organize the drinks. Like I don't want to like prepare for it. I just want to be here. My friends turn up. We sit around and do it. So I have someone, um, my, uh, my assistant, who calls up this paleo restaurant in Los Angeles. They're organized for, uh, she's organized for it for food to be delivered at a certain time. I have another guy who works with me, Chris, who's coming over and he's going to stand out the front and let people of my building and let people in. Um, uh, so I don't have to keep going out there to let people in or buzz people in. That will save me some time and stress. That means that the people who've arrived here, I can give to my full attention away and not having to keep running out the front of the building and let people in as they arrive. So I have someone who's helping me with that. That's another little example. Um, there you go. I think that's enough. You get the idea, right? Uh, I would encourage you just to have a think about your own life and figure out what it is that you hate. And whatever it is that you hate, try to eliminate it if you can. I don't particularly enjoy grocery shopping either. Like I, I hate grocery shopping. So sometimes now I'll get Insta, I think it's Instamate or Postmates or something. I can't remember what it's called. To be honest with you, I don't even do it now. I have my assistant um, say, uh, order it. So now I've kind of got a core group of food that I, that I want to buy when I'm home. She's kind of got it saved in this automatic uh, purchase thing in one of those... Um, see, I don't even know what it's, I don't even know what it's called. Like it might be Postmates or something. Um, I don't know. So I'll just say, Hey, Sarah, I need, uh, I need some more grass fed beef, I need some chicken, let me some sauerkraut. Let me get me some like good fat, some ghee, some grass fed butter. Um, get me some, um, kale and spinach and some, um, vegetables and stuff. And she'll just go on and do it. And, um, it's not even like, it doesn't even take it 10 minutes because I've ordered that stuff before. It's already saved in there, like a saved purchase. She can just go in there and just go click bang and send it off. Now I'm not going to go in there and do it because I don't want to log into another site, put in my username and try and do it. And again, you might be thinking, Dan, this is so easy. Yeah, it is so easy. And it's probably simple, but it still causes me stress and it takes me away from being productive. And if it takes me 30 minutes to do that and go grocery shopping, wouldn't that 30 minutes be better spent with me living a life that I want to live and spending 30 minutes, maybe making a sale, which could make me money. Imagine if I make a sale or I, I focus on my business and it ends up inspiring more people, which brings in more money. Maybe it's $300. So every time I go grocery shopping, it's costing me $300. I'm not making $300. That's the way I look at it now. Like I look at it like what's the best use of my time and what's it costing me to do these things that I don't want to do, not just in time, but also in just what's it costing me in my overall happiness. Now you also may be listening to this going, well, it's easy for you, James, because you sound like you've got money to be able to hire assistants and I'm, you know, struggling and I don't, I don't ha have enough money at the moment to just go and hire assistants and all that stuff. Totally understand, hear what you're saying, but there's lots and lots of things that you can do that don't require you coughing up, um, just coughing up money. I mean, you can literally, you can make your life so much simpler and easier by just setting up an online account for your grocery shopping as an example and going right one time there it is set up. Now I can order my groceries. It can come whenever I want. Now I don't have to physically go to the um, grocery store, park my car, walk on in, choose the food I want, stand in a checkout line, go back to my car, put the groceries in, drive home, park the car, pull it out, pull the groceries out, stick it in the fridge, do all that kind of stuff. No. Nah. Now it's just like, what do I want? There it is. Bang, sh sh bang, delivered, done. Um, uh, uh, likewise, you can pull, pull your resources with someone. Like if you live next door to someone and you want to, you want, want to hire a cleaner, you could probably do a deal with a cleaner where you could go, um, instead of me having to cough up a hundred bucks for the cleaner to come, you could go to your next door neighbor and say, Hey, do you want to split a cleaner? And we'll try and get it down to like, you know, 150 to do two of our things, which is $75 each. So you've saved yourself $25 there. It becomes a little bit more cost effective. You can also get people cleaners to come and only do your laundry. So you, you charge them like 20 bucks just to do the laundry. If, could you do it for four bucks if you do it in the laundry? Sure. But if, if you pay $15 extra, 
maybe you save yourself an hour of time, maybe that hour of time you can spend on building a business or doing whatever it is that you, that you want to do. The point being, there's lots of ways that you can team up with people. Um, um, you can exchange services, for example, if there's stuff that you don't want to do and you don't have the money to pay for it, you can say, well, you know what, if you do this thing for me, I'll do this thing for you. Um, exchange services, uh, as long as it's something that you enjoy doing. Remember, don't do something that you hate or that you're weak at. Um, and uh, yeah, and then simple things like the Facebook feed, just change the Facebook setting. If it makes you unhappy, change it. Anyway, you get the idea, right? I've labored the point. I'm going to move on. Thank you for listening. Uh, let me know, send me a message uh, and let me know what uh, things you want to eliminate or what you have eliminated. You know, I would love to learn from you. If you've eliminated some things and that's really freed up your time and there's a, you've come up with a smart way of doing it or not even a smart way, just like a simple way, but it was, you know, it's been super effective. Will you let me know? Just let me know. I'd love to know. You can do that by leaving a review in iTunes. In fact, I've started to give away prizes now to people who do subscribe to the show and leave a review. So if you want to be eligible to win a pair of Swanee's glasses uh, or get some of my free programs, you, uh, you have to subscribe and leave a review. So if you leave a review, um, uh, you're, in the, you're eligible for uh, prizes. And uh, yeah, let me know. Cool. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm out of here. Catch you on the next one.